Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our Trending Thursday YouTube Nation. I'm going to call you guys our YouTube Nation. I like that. You like that, Joey? By the way, sitting side saddle to me is Joey. He's my producer. Say hi, Joey. Hi. Uh, I am a senior in, uh, instructor here at VectorVest. Uh, I love doing this, and I'm glad that you guys are here. Hopefully, you're here to have a little bit of fun, but most of all, learn how to make money in the market. And we're going to look at what stocks are trending in the market, and we're going to use a powerful tool known as VectorVest to help you to discern what's good, what's not good, and actually pick up on some ideas and some stocks that you may not be aware of that are trending. Before we get started, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, especially if you are brand new. If you like the content here, let us know. Uh, when Joey puts these videos up, uh, if you would comment on them, tell me what you think. Do you like it? Do you not like it? And most of all, tell me what you would like to see in these videos. You guys have a voice. Use it. So when Joey updates these videos, you're looking at it live now. But when Joey updates these videos, go back to the videos. When he cuts them up in different segments, comment on the videos. And we are trying to make something go viral on YouTube. Remember, hashtag I on MTI. Hashtag I on MTI. Because this is an important time in the market to keep on top of an indicator that you won't find any place else but here at VectorVest, which is that MTI or market timing indicator. And we're gonna talk a little bit about that in a second. So again, welcome to everybody. I'm glad you're all here. Do not be afraid to chat in. And the more you chat, we're gonna start giving away some things to uh, reward you for chatting in and to reward you for commenting on the videos after they've been put out. So with that, no further ado, let's get right into the software. From the homepage of the software, if you're not a subscriber to the software, this is what our homepage looks like. This is gonna give you a plethora of information at your fingertips to help you to make the right decisions at the right time. We always start off by talking about what's going on in the market, and that's important before you pull the trigger on any trade at all, whether you're bullish or bearish. So on our homepage, we have our daily traffic light, uh, the market timing gauge, and currently we are all the way pegged in the yellow. The color guard is neutral. On a daily basis, this gives you an idea of what you should be doing daily. And we give you guidance. VectorVest advocates caution when buying stocks at this time, which makes sense. You don't want to go out full bore and start buying long stocks, and it's not quite time to sell stocks short yet. Let me explain. Because we look at our color guard, this is a bigger view of our traffic light into the market. All right, the market timing gauge is in a daily view. But when we look at our color guard, we're looking at six days of data. And we're looking at three of our market timing indicators. The price, which is the price movement of the vector vest composite. That's an indexed arithmetic average of all of the stocks that we track. Currently, we're tracking 8,262 stocks. The average price of those stocks right now is trading at $51.78. Also in the color guard, RT, stands for relative timing, one of our core proprietary indicators. It lets us know if the market is in an uptrend or not. Above the value of one, the market's in an uptrend. Below the value of one, the market's in a downtrend. The BSR, or buy to sell ratio. Every stock in our database gets a buy, a sell or a hold recommendation every day. To get the uh, indicator, the buy to sell ratio, we look at the number of buys divided by the number of sells. Currently, the buy to sell ratio is at 1.68. So for every sell recommendation in the software, we have 1.68 buys. That tells us that the market is showing signs of strength. But I can watch on a week over week basis, is that indicator rising or falling? Currently, we're still above the value of one. The market's showing signs of strength. But what do I see going on? It's starting to fall. What do I see going on with the relative timing? It's starting to fall. Now, on the other hand, the price of the vector vest composite is still rising on a week over week basis. This is a time to be cautious. Now, when I talked about being able to understand why you should be cautious, we have an indicator called the MTI. This looks at the price, the RT, and the buy to sell ratio wrapped up into one indicator. Also cast on a scale between zero and two. 
Above one is favorable. Above one tells me that the underlying trend of the market is up. Currently at 1.45, as a VectorVest subscriber, when the MTI gets to a level of about 1.5 to 1.6, the market is now in a level where it is looking for a top. No one else has that kind of an indicator. So keeping all of that in mind, this is where we stand on our longer term color guard or our longer term traffic light in the market, caution is advised. Now, let's take that information and delve into the news of why the market is doing what it's doing. And let's go out to our first news story, which starts off here. Wow, that looks that's, ugly. That's not the right one. Is it this one? No. Which one? This is Joey's fault, y'all. That's not the one. I know. Okay. Joey. Joey's messing it up. Okay. Oh, that's what I was supposed to do. Oh, Joey's making it. All right. So things that are affecting the market. Yep. It's ugly. It's not ugly. It's not. That picture was ugly. It's all right. But now it's all better. Um, hey, what's up, Rich? Rich is in here as Rich, not Trade Shark. Look at that. Interesting, Rich. Hmm. Are you incognito? Hmm. I'm glad you're here, Rich. All right. It's always Joey's fault, says Charles. You see that, Charles? I uh, see that, Joey. See that, Joey? It's always Charles. It's always uh, never mind. Anyway, good. A big story that's hitting: trade tensions with Europe flares as Trump flexes economic muscle. Now, President says he will impose new tariffs on the European car imports if the EU doesn't agree to a new trade pact. So it's out there. It could affect the market. It could drive people to feel a little bit more. Um, nervous in the market, but notice the caveat here. He will impose new tariffs if, if the EU doesn't agree to a new trade pact. So you know what this means? The EU has got to come to the table. The president is trying to make a deal, a better deal. And if they do make a better deal, these tariffs now go away. So keeping that in mind, what else is affecting the market? Well, how about looking at the U.S. manufacturing output rises unexpectedly? U.S. manufacturing output rose unexpectedly in December as a drop in motor vehicle output was outpaced by increases in production of other durable goods, food and beverages and other products. So what does that do? If the manufacturing rises, then that's always good for the economy. It means people are working, we're putting out product. If we're putting out product, people can buy it. If people will buy it, we'll make more money. We make more money, we're all happy. It's a big happy circle, right? So keeping that in mind, um, this is all part of the 2020 vision for investors this year. This is the year 2020. This is the year where we're trying to emphasize new vision for you guys. Uh, to help you, and especially if you're new to the VectorVest software, this is what it's all about. This is why you come here. So manufacturing is up. Overall industrial output fell, though, after a downwardly revised increase of a 0.8 or 8 tenths of a percent in November. All right, so keeping all of that in mind, these are things that are affecting the market. And another big thing, in case you were not aware of, usually, uh, US, usually, U.S. weekly job claims increase less than expected. Guess what, folks? People are working. That is always great for the economy. Now, Charles says that they won't agree in the EU. Well, Charles, guess what? I don't think that they want to go through what uh, China just went through with us with the tariffs because it hurt them. It hurt us, too. But what did it do? It did bring China to the table. And, you know, whether you like it, whether you dislike it, what was the outcome? I right, think about it from that perspective. You know, I don't talk politics in the room. This is not about politics. This is actually about financially what's making the market move. So just keep that in mind. No, Trade Shark is, in, is the incognito one. <laughs> Never mind, Joff. Trade, uh, trade, now, 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 wait a minute. Which one? I got both, uh, are both of you in here? It's both rich and, it doesn't matter. I'm glad you're here. How about that? I'm glad you're here. Uh, the number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits increased less than expected last, year, uh, last week. People are working. The data suggests that the labor market continues to tighten even as job growth is slowing. French people are stubborn. They said they will retaliate. Well, you know, they can and, uh, uh, China did too, right? China did too, but all together, 
Altogether, the outcome was a good one. We got a deal made with China. So keeping all of that in mind. So these are three things that are definitely in the news, that are trending in the news, that is affecting the market. Let's go back into the software, and I'm going to bring up um, my watch list real quick. Where's that at, Joey? Uh, watch list, Joey, you need to go back into the program. Okay, I got to go back into the program and go here. So here's the watch list of the stocks that we're looking at today. The first two that we'll look at in regards to the market are the VVC. And what a lot of people who, who don't have the software, they will look at an indicator, the spiders, the SPY. I'm going to highlight the both of them, right click. Let's take a look at their graphs. So this is the market. For us, this is the movement of over 8,200 stocks in one ticker symbol called the VVC or the Vector Vest Composite. I can see overall the movement of 8,200 stocks, what they're doing. This is a beautiful move in the market. I'm going to take off this line. Beautiful move in the market, bouncing off a level of support that was at $45.94. Love the move. But understand this. And this was a song done by Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Yes, I'm going to sing it. What? goes up, must come down. Do, 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 do. Anyway, great song, but it holds true for what's going on. We have an indicator, the MTI telling us that the market is at a top or looking for a top. And what's the market doing? I'm going to put this on a three-month graph. What's the market doing? Starting to flatten out a little bit. I do have two moving averages on the market. I have the three and the eight exponential moving average, even on something on the move of 8,200 stocks. It does a great job of keeping you from worrying about what to do uh, uh, in the market. All right, so keep that in mind. Uh, the market is starting to level out. The earnings for the, uh, uh, for the vector vest composite is still rising higher than it was three months ago, higher on a one year over year basis as well. So earnings are looking good. We're currently in earnings season. A lot of companies are beating earnings. Some companies are missing on earnings, but overall I think more companies beating earnings than not. Let's go to the S&P 500, the spiders, same kind of scenario. The three and the eight, the spiders or the S&P 500 looks good, but what is it doing? Starting to top out a little bit as well. The three and the eight exponential moving averages are holding on it as well. So what does this mean for you? As a investor in the market, taking advantage of this nice uptrend in the market, if nothing else, tighten the stops on the stocks that you own. Don't panic. Today is a down day. Today is not the day to panic. One day does not make a trend. Tighten the stops on the stocks that you own. What does that mean? If I'm using a stop loss of about a 30% gain and a 10% loss to get me out of the stocks, tighten it down to a 20% gain or 7% loss. This allows you to take the profits on your stocks a little faster and allows you to get out of losers a little faster so that they don't go against you. All right. Number two, if you have a trailing stop, maybe a trailing 10, tighten it down to a trailing seven. This allows you again to take profits quicker and get out of losses a little quicker as well. So with all of that being said, that's what's going on in the market. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Because if not, we are going to move on. Trades are panic at the disco. What are you talking? I'm not singing any panic at the disco song. I'm not doing that. Yes, beating on earnings per share, but forward guidance is not so great. I'm going to cover that on Netflix today. All right. I don't see any questions coming in. Uh, Job says, uh, like Marlon Brando said, sometimes you have to make them a deal they can't refuse. I'm going to make you a deal that you can't refuse. And that's, maybe that's what's going to happen with uh, the, the EU. So he goes, did Jake just say must go? My marriage counselor is at the door. I just realized that that was up there. Did, did Jake, did he really leave? <laughs> wow. Way to go, Brian. Just put that all out there. All right. All right. Let me close this down. Let's get to our next story. The next story. Everybody knows that we have the coronavirus in China affecting China, and we do have one case of it in the U.S., so it's sort of like the SARS disease as it started from over here and came out, or the bird flu. It's a bad thing. How bad? We don't know how bad it is yet. But let me talk to you about some stocks that are being affected by that whole, um, that, that whole section of um, the coronavirus. 
All right. Um, one case in my state, says Charles. I know I heard that it was in the U.S. What state is that, Charles? Curious to know. Uh, huh? Is it, is it, stay away from them, Charles. Well, wherever you are, we're all done. Wow. No, we, we are one day trade shark. Gosh, don't put it out there like that in Washington. All right. So with that being said, let's see what stocks are taking advantage of a mishap like this, because there are some stocks. How about we look at CODX, a molecular diagnostics company intends to manufacture and sell regions used for diagnostic tests that function via the detection and or analysis of nucleic acid molecules. Molecules. It's up 92% since the outbreak of the uh, coronavirus. NNVC up 38%. LPTX up 28%, KLDO up 23%, and SGMX up 15%. So these are stocks that are in the business of taking advantage of bad things like the coronavirus. So, um, Glenn, are the stop losses for each stock on VectorVest a suggested stop? So, Devin, that's a good question. When I look at the individual stops on the stock, what that is is a line in the sand on every stock. The best stocks to use for our stop price are probably going to be stocks like top VST stocks or really safe, good, long-term stocks. When you have a more volatile stock, you're going to have a stop price, but it may not be as good as a, as a solid line in the sand because stocks are volatile. Does that make sense? So when I look at the stop price, it is a great price. It's a 13-week moving average adjusted for the fundamentals of the stock. Normally, more volatile stocks have bad fundamentals, whereas good, solid stocks have good fundamentals, and the stock price is better used on a more solid stock. Does that make sense, Devin? Hopefully, that does. Hopefully, that makes sense. So, yes, it is a line in the sand on every stock, but it's more usable on stocks that have good, solid fundamentals. All right, Devin? He didn't answer. Devin didn't answer. Did you scare him away? Hopefully, did, I, did that make sense, Devin? All right. I'm going to keep on going. All right, so here's the stocks that are taking advantage. We have some stocks that are not doing as well, but we're going to concentrate from a trending perspective. We're going to take advantage of the stocks that are making, that are making money due to um, this outbreak. Uh, let's do this. The stocks are SNGX. Here's my list, Joey. SNGX, NNVC, we'll highlight that. We're going to look at KLDO, we'll highlight that. We're going to look at LPTX, we'll highlight that. And the last one is, uh, there it is, I'm missing one, CODX. There it is. So here's the five stocks that are uh, taking advantage of that, uh, uh, of an upward move in the coronavirus. These are all pharmaceuticals. All right, they're all pharmaceuticals. None of them are buy recommendations. Um, earnings growth rate on these, man, the only one that's got a really good earnings growth rate is CODX. And LPTX has got a 3%. But looking at the VST, how about S SNGX has got the highest VST in my list, which is value, safety, and timing. The overall um, default or un overall uh, value of the stock, looking at relative value, relative safety, relative stocks. Most of these stocks do not have good upside potential. Most of these stocks are not safe stocks, but they are going up in price. This is where RT comes in. All of them are above the value of one, and they are in uptrend. So I'm going to right click. I only check those. Look at the graphs. All right, first one, SNGX, put this on a three month graph. Man, that stock is moving. So if you don't know about this stock, number one, it's moving. Look at the big move in the candle today. Look at the volume. Volume is conviction on a stock. And if it's taking advantage, if you don't know about this stock, this is the beautiful thing about being here on Trending Thursday. Love the move on the stock. It's a low dollar stock that's taking advantage of the norovirus, of the coronavirus. So keep that in mind, SNGX. What other stocks are in here? Woo! And then VC, not so hot. Um, very limited in how much movement it's had. It's been pretty flat as a drug biomedical. Big pop. Look at the selling pressure on that stock. Follow through. Man, be careful with this one. 
Uh, I probably wouldn't touch it until it took out that most recent high. Earnings, though, is less. It's getting less worse. All right. It was. It's you know, earnings right now is sitting at negative two dollars and thirty seven cents. But back here, it was at negative two dollars and seventy cents. All right. Let's go to the next one real quick. Big jump on KLDO. Uh, earnings is getting better, even though it's still in the negative. Big jump, three in the eight cross, big volume. May not be a bad play. Would love to see it take out that high, though. Or if you got into it now, five cents higher than the high, I give you a profit target of $9.40. Does everybody understand that? The stock's price is moving. I would go five cents higher than the high. I've got a profit target sitting at 940. This right now, because of the virus that's out there, can give you a good opportunity to make a quick buck or two on the stock. Next stock is LPTX. Nicely moving higher. Oh, look at that. A lot of profit taking on this stock as the stock gapped up this morning. A lot of selling pressure on big volume. Be careful with that one as well. So there's a couple in here I do like. Codex gapped up this morning, closed candle, which means that the price started at the top of the candle and fell. That's a lot of profit taking. Yesterday, the stock's price closed. Let's go check that out. Last uh, Yesterday, the stock's price closed at $1.13. This stock went up as high as uh, $2.80. That's all profit taking, especially when the stock's price was moving sideways. Probably wouldn't touch this as well. So possible stocks to take a look at. KLDO in this space may be one, and definitely SNGX. So if you didn't know about these two, you now know that they're trending in the news because of the coronavirus, and these are the two possible stocks that I would take advantage of. All right, with that, anybody have any questions? Anybody have any questions? Let me close out of that graph. I'm taking those questions. All right, go once, go in twice, Three times sold. All right, let's get into our next story. The next story talks about Boeing. All right, Boeing wildcard stands over er airline earnings. A lot of airlines already reported their earnings. Some of them are moving up, some of them are moving down. But the big thing is this, the grounding of the 737 MAX is still affecting uh, Boeing in a bad way. It's a major talking point of the airline companies that reported earnings today. Our operational and financial performances in 2019 were still true. This is Boeing. Truly remarkable. Oh, no, 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 no. This is not for Boeing. We're truly remarkable considering an estimated $828 million reduction in operating income and a significant reduction in planned flights due to the max grounding. So remember... All of these airlines were utilizing the Boeing 737 MAX, and they had to take them out of their inventory and couldn't fly them. But Southwest Airlines uh, up today at 1.6%. And looking at uh, Boeing is actually up 1.3%. American Airlines also discussed the impact of the 737, and it's aimed to be compensated. Whoa! That's big to be compensated by Boeing. So American Airlines is going to start going after Boeing and say, yo, you hurt my business. What's up? And then that's going to be interesting to see if they're going to be able to get any compensation. Because if they can, all of these other airlines, if they can, if they can they're going to all go after Boeing. That's big news. Now, I don't know how much of a strong or steady ground they have to go after for compensation from Boeing. But that's big news. Did anybody know that? Jake is back now. Did anybody know that this was going on? This is why you come to, trend, uh, to Trending Thursday. That's big news. One of those carriers that is benefiting from the grounding of Jet uh, is JetBlue, which guided for a capacity growth of 55 to 7.5% this year without the max to worry about. So JetBlue was ahead of the game, and they were like, listen, I'm not getting into that 737 max. I don't even need the plane. So JetBlue was already calculating uh, a capacity growth in, in the airline um, without using the 737 MAX, so they're not feeling the effect. Interesting. All right, interesting. Kirby is here. Hi, Kirby. I haven't seen you for a long time, man. I'm glad to see that you're here, my friend. I'm glad to see that you're here. All right, and so we're going to look at a couple of these airlines that are being affected by Boeing. So it's not just Boeing. 
It is Boeing and the other airlines that buy from Boeing for that 737 MAX. Let's get back into the software. Get back to my watch list of airlines we're going to look at. JetBlue. We're going to look at Southwest. We're going to look at Boeing. We're going to look at American Airlines. So those are the four stocks that we're going to look at in the airlines. Let's see. How about JetBlue as a buy? Remember, JetBlue wasn't depending on the 737 MAX. How about that is the only airline that we're looking at that has a buy recommendation. So we look at, oh, did I, I have Southwest. Southwest is up here, my friend, Devin. There it is. We, we are highlighting uh, Southwest as well. But notice that is the only airline in this group that's got a buy recommendation. They have an earnings growth rate of 16%. How about out of the airlines? They have the best, earn, uh, they have the best earnings growth. JetBlue out of the airline space may be the way to go, but let's right click and let's take a look at the stock graphs. Let's go see. Look at that move on JetBlue. JetBlue starting to run. Let's go put this on a three month graph. Love the earnings per share. Earnings is higher than it was three months ago. And look at the 3.8 cross. This is why we use it because it works. Go ahead, Tom, type it in the room. This really works. Look at the 3.8 crossover. It broke through a couple of levels of resistance here and here. And now the stock's price is nicely moving higher. Love it that it's doing it on, <laughs> that it's doing it on uh, rising volume. Jay, did you really put about, did you put in here Pan Am? Really? Lisa put it in. Way to go, Lisa. I like that. This stuff really works. And this is for the, this is for the advantages of the new people that may be here that do not have the VectorVest software. All right. But look at the move on JetBlue after it was slightly down, slightly down the sideways, nicely moving higher. I would go about 12 cents higher than the high. Love the earnings per share along with the good volume. What else is in here? Man, Southwest. Look at the downtrend on Southwest. Look at the big move on it today. The three and the eight just crossed. But look at the sideways move. Moving averages don't work very well when a stock is moving sideways. All right, but look at that move. I definitely would love to see this if the stock could break out of this level of resistance at 55.82, number one. Number two, look at the earnings per share. Their earnings are not growing. Their numbers are not growing. Um, to a GT, called it out for my peeps. Beat your GT. To a GT call it. Oh, for which stock, uh, uh, Rich? For which stock? All right. Uh, Love is also seeking compensation from Bo. Oh, is that what it is? So not only is American Airlines seeking compensation from Boeing, but uh, Southwest is as well. What earnings says Joff? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. So there is Southwest is looking for compensation, and American Airlines is looking for compensation. Let's get to Boeing, though. There it is. There it is in the nutshell. Uh, I can show you <clears throat> by way of a trend line. Look at that. Stock is in a downtrend. Let's go bring up uh, a darker line. Look at that. Look at that. And it's just, you know, a nice update today, but look at their earnings. They are so affected by the 737 grounding. And, you know, I like that JetBlue didn't jump on board with that plane, and they're feeling the effects. JetBlue might definitely be the way to go. JetBlue, oh, you're talking about, so look at that, my friend. We're, at least we think on the same level, uh, Rich. How about that? And that's why we get along so well. All right, this is a beautiful thing. I love uh, analyzing the stocks and the software. Let's go look at the next one. American Airlines in a channel. Big channel between... Um, the level of resistance, 29.72, level of support at 26.85. Earnings is lower than it was three months ago and trending lower. I do like the rising volume. That means people are getting more interested in it. But man, this stock has got to get out of its own way, break out of that level of resistance. It's got to break out of that level of resistance. Now, Airbus, I did not put in. Um, what's the ticker symbol for Airbus? Um, let's go find out. Airbus. Airbus, there it is. Is that it? it? Does not appear in the watch list. Oh, I'm trying to find it. All right, you can analyze Airbus. I did not put it in. Add symbols. I'll do it this way. Airbus. Oops. Airbus. We'll look at that real quick. All right. Joey may or may not put this into the video. This is on the fly. Uh, another hold recommendation, but I'll look, I'll take a look at it. 
another hold recommendation. Stock was moving up earlier in the year of, of 2019, starting to move up again. Let's put this on a three month graph and no earnings. Wow, this is not an ETF, but uh, our, our earnings are, are flat. Earnings are flat at 249. Um, watch the pullback on it, uh, George. Watch the pullback on it. All right, the stock is moving higher. Might have found the top. It gapped down a little bit of a dragonfly doji right now. The 3 and the 8 haven't broken down, though. Our volume is pretty steady. I would still wait for more confirmation if I'm not already in it. All right, any questions? Let's close that out. Any questions? Uh, Job says Southwest and Allegiant also don't use the 737, so no scheduling problems. But fuel costs may have a lot to do with earnings. Ah, you know, with oil doing what it's doing, um, I hear you on that. Uh, is OTC, so no stop loss on what stock? On the stock that I just look at? Um, no stop loss. There's a stop loss. There's a stop on every stock. Where's my stop? Um, where's it at? Where's all my stops? Why my stops are not here? Oh, there they are. Stops. It's got a stop at $35.32. Did you cover Netflix ready? Not yet, Charles. I'm getting there. Um, will BA continue crashing? That's a good, you know something? That's a good question. And I'm going to keep this as part of the story because you know I will not predict. But you know something? In order for me to say that Boeing is going to stop falling, what needs to happen? I need, to, I need the stock to break above that trend line. As long as it stays below the trend line, Rich, the stock is in a downtrend. That's it in a nutshell. That's it in a, nut, in a nutshell. It's not the stock. All right. No, the what, stock. What the, uh, not, the, <laughs> not the plane. Not the plane. I didn't say the plane. I said the stock. I'm looking at the stock. Uh, wondered the same. So, yeah, as long as the stock stays in, I love being able to put the, Trend line on the graph, it'll stay on the graph. Anytime I open it up, the trend line will be there. As long as it stays below that, the stock is in a downtrend. As long as earnings start to continue to fall, it's going to stay that way. All right, good question. Good trash question. All right, let's get to our last story. Let's go back to, uh, before I get to my last story, again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And another couple of things here. We have a Twitter account. Go to Twitter, look up VectorVest, like it. We also have a mobile app. Everyone who's in here that has a subscription to the software, you all have access to the mobile app. Part of our 2020 vision is being able to do your trading while you're out and about. All right, so uh, Patrick does a, uh, a Facebook presentation every Thursday at 11 about how to utilize the mobile app. Go to it. If you don't know that we have a Facebook page, go to Facebook, find VectorVest like it. And last but not least, oh, that's it. So the mobile app and Facebook, along with YouTube, you guys from a social media standpoint are well covered as far as VectorVest is concerned. All right. So Twitter, um, Facebook, and of course, YouTube, you want to stay on top of this kind of stuff, get this kind of information. And again, if you're brand new, like this. Comment in the room. Let me know, especially if you're new, if you find this useful. If you don't find it useful, tell me Glenn, you suck, and I don't find this useful. And then we'll just edit that out, and we'll never talk about that again. But I really do want to hear from you guys, especially when it comes time to looking at these videos. Comment on the videos, folks. That's how we grow our footprint in this space. I'm asking you, comment on the videos. All right, and the Jockey Club, that's once you become a subscriber, Charles. That's once you become a... Uh, um, a subscriber. All right, let's get into our next story. Let's go back out. This is our last story for the day. And that has to deal with stream wars. Yes, mark that because Joey's going to put that out there and put the little echoey effects behind it. Um, Comcast, 3% down after warning heavier video sub losses. Everybody knows who the big boys are in the stream field. And you know something? I thought that with Disney Plus, they were going to really start to eat Netflix's lunch. But Netflix is still the big boy. I'm going to talk a little bit about Netflix in a second. All right. So just keep that in mind. Glenn, you suck and I don't find this useful. Wow. 
Can we put him in timeout? Timeout. All right. Uh, Rich, Rich is your... No, don't put him in timeout. Don't, no, no, no. Don't put him in timeout. No. no, don't put him in timeout. That's too late. Wow. That's so not That's nice. Late. I had it ready to go. You had it ready to go. <laughs> I want everybody to, to boo Trade Shark. Everybody type in the room. Boo. Uh, George says... Definitely useful. Been watching in the background for a while. Thank you for coming out of the back room, George. Uh, from the back room. From the background, George, to at least say that. I totally appreciate that, man. Thank you very, very much. Thank you, Charles. There you go, Trade Shark. You're getting it now. I'm not putting you in, I'm not putting you in timeout. The people in the room are coming after you. <laughs> All right. And Bob. Bob speaking up today. Thank you for that, Bob. Uh, I appreciate the people who are coming out of the background to speak up. I really want your input. I really do want your input. Man, I, I, I'm going to get to that. I'm getting, I'm getting there, AT. I got you, my friend. Um, I got you. So Comcast is one uh, that is feeling the effects to the downside because losing subscribers. And I still think um, if Netflix is not picking up new subscribers, Disney is. So I just wanted to show this story. Reversed earlier pre-market gains and turned lower before the bell and has come out today's open down 3% after warning of more video subscriber losses this year. On the company's earning call, CFO Michael Cavanaugh said that considering ongoing consumer trends and planned rate increases this year, expect higher declines in 2020, which means Comcast is probably going to feel even more effects to the downside as well but let's talk about that um uh a disney or amazon should buy netflix wow you know something i don't think netflix would do it because they are still the big boys unless they're just saying you know we started this thing we grew this thing and now we want to get out of this thing and you know a, a disney amazon you know who else could buy them apple Apple could buy them, but I think Apple is really trying to push their own content. So Apple may be out of the running, but Disney or Amazon might be in the, you know, as long as Netflix is saying, Psh, we set, the, we set uh, the bar and maybe we're ready to get out of it. Could be interesting. All right, let's do this. Let's go back to the software. Go back. Let's go look at them. All right, there's Apple. Who else are we looking at? Netflix, um, Disney. Um, was that the only three? Oh, and CMCSA, uh, right here. All right, let's take a look at them. Out of this list now, who's got to buy? Apple's got to buy. Why? Because they are still my favorite stock in the whole wide world. How about Netflix? The only other stock in this list that's a buy recommendation out of the stream war people. Interesting. All right, let's go right click on them. Let's view the stock graph. Let's move this over. Look at that. You can't, be, that's, that's a thing of beauty. Apple right now is still hitting all-time highs. Now, Apple content, I like the Apple content as far as the, the streaming is concerned. But, you know, Joey and I had a conversation about that. When you look at Netflix, Netflix is all about just streaming. Whereas when you look at Apple, you look at Amazon, you look at Disney, they are not, streaming is just one portion of their business. So we were kind of iffy about bringing up all of these other stocks but it makes sense because they are in the streaming field. Now, Apple is going up, but that doesn't mean that they're going up strictly on just the stream. Apple is just making money. Apple is just making money. Right now, it's flattening out, but the three and the eight are still in place. Love the earnings per share. Um, Charles says, should I wait for a pullback in order to buy Apple? Keep in mind, Charles, what did we start off by saying in the market? We're at a level where the market is looking toppy. Be careful with buying new stocks right now. And even if you take Apple, wait for it. To, if you're going to take it now, 12 cents higher than the high before you pull the trigger on it. And because you know the market is toppy, put on a tighter stop than you normally will. That's right. The MTI is high. Keep your hashtag. Keep eye on MTI. That's absolutely right, Charles. And having the hashtag like that and having the ability to know that is all part of our 2020 vision for this year. All right, so if you do decide to take advantage of a new position on Apple, just put a tighter stop on it in case the market does pull back. Any of the, is anybody up there uh, trading Apple right now? <coughs> is anybody else trading, uh, trading Apple right now? 
Badger says Microsoft has the money to buy any of them, but Microsoft has their head in the cloud. Literally, they do. Think of them. Think of the uh, the content Microsoft could deliver through an Xbox. Wow, that's a that's 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 out of there. That's really really good uh, thinking. That is super good, um, and I think that would bump up Xbox sales from the PS4. You know, think about that. All right, so uh, just keeping all that in mind, let's take a look at the next stock. Netflix. Netflix doesn't look nearly as good as Apple, but still hitting very close to three month high. Love the earnings per share. Definitely moving up. Big up day for Netflix. Now, interesting yesterday. See this point right here? Netflix, it was either yesterday or the day before, one of those two. Um, it was here where they uh, uh, um, announced earnings on 121. They beat earnings, they beat revenue. But the forward guidance was not there, and the stock fell. But look at the rebound today. All right, people still feel that Netflix is the way to go. They are the big boys in the stream wars. They are still the big boy in the stream wars. So they announced earnings on 121. They beat earnings. They beat revenue. But forward guidance wasn't there. The stock got adversely hit. And then today, the stock is reversing. Look at the 3.8 on big volume. So keep that in mind. Any of these stocks that look good, be careful with them right now. Disney, man, I love the Disney content. They've got more in their vaults than anybody as far as content. But man, they are not really, it's not doing as well as I thought it would be. Good uh, trade on this would be a put. Man, a good trade on this would be a put for the time being. Um, that's just, wow. That is way big. Wow. Netflix. Um, percent as, invent as investors realize the whole world will be quarantined with, with the coronavirus and stuck watching Netflix. Did you type that? Uh, was that was that Tom? Who did that? That was it. Said Vectorvest did it. Yeah, it was either Clay or Jen. I think. Oh, was it okay? So it could be either Clay or Jen in the background. All right, Netflix percentage. Uh, as investors realize the whole world will be quarantined, the whole world's not going to be quarantined. It's just. But Netflix, people are watching Netflix. Jen, too early. No, that's, <laughs> yes, it's too early. It's too early to say that. So Jen is here. Hi, Jen. I'm waving at Jen. Jen is one of our, um, our um, what, is, what is this called? Uh, social media. She's one of our social media experts in the background. She's awesome. She really is awesome. So she's in the room as well. So thank you for being here, Jen. CMCSA, the big drop down because they're losing. And they're saying that they're forecasting to even lose even more. That's in effect. So uh, CMCSA may not be the way to go. And that's all my stocks. Anybody have any questions? Jen is saying hello to everybody. All right. Any questions? I got a surprise for you today. Woo! I left a little bit of time for super surprise today. So for everyone who's here, you want to know about what's trending, I'm going to show you a, a different way in the software to see what's trending, but not from us, not from only us. So everybody out there, everybody out there, are you bringing out the merchandise table? I am. So here's, um, if you want to bid on my vape, here's my vape. Um, merchandise, I have a Michigan cup, in case you want to, I have an iPhone, if you want to, and I have my iPad. So yeah, there's my merchandise table there, Jay. I just brought out the whole merchandise table. I'm taking bids. I'm taking bids. All right, so this is the big thing that we're going to talk about today. It's found in our watch list viewer. All right, if you want to find stocks to jump on board, this is the place to be. All right, we have a special watch list in the software called Wow Watch List. What this is, it is the watch list of watch lists. There are stocks which are being recommended by various popular newsletter writers, and other publications. This watch list is recreated every Friday, and we started this back in 2000. So I'm going to look at the top 10 stocks. You'll understand in a second. Right now, there's 303 stocks overall in this total watch list. In this total, are you still, oh, um, John is supposed to get a mug. Was he? Yeah, evidently. That's, he's just in the room. John, I'm going to get, I'm going to get, I'm gonna get uh, and Lisa says too. 
<laughs> Lisa, you just you just putting that. If John was supposed to get a mug, I'm gonna get Joey to send out one to you, John. All right, I'm gonna send that out. I got that done. Uh, huh? I would have got that done. You would have got that done. All right. Well, we're going to look into that, John. I got you. I got you. And we're going to put this on 10 stocks. So I'm going to show you the power of this watch list. If you want to see which, which stocks in it, and there's Jay, there's Jay, and a mouse pad, whatever. If you want to see what stocks are the best stocks in this watch list of 303 stocks by way of VST, sort the list by VST. All right? Now, Xpel at the top, PayC, CNC, for... All of these stocks are here. These are not stocks that are coming from us. These are stocks that are coming from out, from all throughout the industry. So I love that. How about look at the fundamentals on these stocks? RVs above one, RS above one, RTs above one. These are solid stocks. Look at their earnings growth rate. These are solid stocks that you may or may not know about. So I know Rich probably knows about some of these stocks. Let's go through these stocks real quick. Remember, these are stocks that are being touted about all throughout the, uh, the investment industry. Hi, Marie. And look at the earnings per share. Look, I'm just going to go through. Look at these graphs. Look at Pay C. Look at it go. Look at CNC. Centene. Nicely moving higher. Would love to see it take out the one-year high, though. But look at that graph. Look at Fortinet. Look at Winnebago. Man, I'm just going to look at these. Talk about, well, Adobe looks super hot. Woo! Put it on three month grab. That's hot. Isn't that hot, Joey? It's hot. It's hot. I like Adobe. Let's go through uh, CI. Look at, wow, look at the builders are starting to pick up again, starting with DHI or DR Horton. Man, holy smokes. So, watch this. I'm going to take this same list of over 300 stocks. Let's say I'm a little bit more aggressive and I want to find the stocks that are moving up the fastest in my list of 300 stocks. I sort the whole list by RT. Now notice my stocks change. Some of them do. I now have other stocks to look at. I would go through the process of looking through these graphs as well. If I want to see the safest stocks in this list, stocks that I might want to in invest for my retirement, out of the 303 stocks, which ones are the best? Folks, the power of force ranking within the VectorVest watch list is unsurpassed. This is the power, again, of using the software and going right along with the 2020 vision. We want you to make better decisions. See clearly. You know why? I can see clearly now the rain is gone. You want to get through all of the rigmarole that goes along with trying to find stocks. This wild watch list is a great way to do so. And even though it's 300 and some odd stocks, I can sort by any. How about I want to look at the stocks that have the best earnings growth rate in that list? Sort by GRT. Stocks change again. So instead of looking through 300 and some odd stocks, why not use our proprietary indicators to hone in on the types of stocks that you're looking for? Man, oh man, this is a great way to stay on top of what's moving all the time. And this is a watch list that, again, looks at stocks coming from all over in this industry. That was my special surprise for you today. If you're not a subscriber, think about taking a 30-day subscription. It's really inexpensive. This is the kind of power that you can expect on an ongoing basis basis. It's updated every Friday, Bari. Updated every Friday. Xpel looks good. Let's go look at Xpel real quick. Let's go view the stock graph. And look at that. It is moving. Look at that. Put, and I always like to look at a three-month graph. How about Xpel breaking through that level of resistance first? I love that the 3 and the 8 is good. I love the earnings per share. The volume's pretty steady. But before you pull the trigger, this is stuff you look at. Before you pull the trigger, let's get out of that level of resistance. All right, last but not least, I got 10 minutes left. Good, look at that, Joey. Let's go open up the graphs. Hopefully you brought some stocks with you today for me to take a look at. I got 10 minutes to do it. Type them in the room. Everybody except for Rich, because Rich, I'm surprised Rich didn't say, um, type them in the room now. Uh, Badger says, Glenn and Joey are making VectorVest great again. Make VectorVest great. Wow, I like that. Look at that. Make VectorVest great again. 
Vector Vest has always been great. Say again, Vector Vest has always been great. High five, Joey. Well, I wanted you to see Joey's hand, but Joey didn't even put his hands in here. So, all right, here we go. Uh, N-I-C-E, um, comma, H-U-B-S, comma, T-T-D, comma, NVIDIA, N-V-D-A, comma, E-N-P-H, comma, ever, forever, ever, forever, ever, N-U-G-T, Comma H E I Heiko. I like that. I haven't heard that. Uh, Las Vegas Sands is that uh, L Y V, comma W M, comma P W F L, comma Square, comma Dagnabbit, P W F L P W F L, comma S Q. Comma. They were ready today. Holy smokes! I may not be able to get to all of these. Wow. T M H C comma I H X or is that L H X? I think that's L H X. L H X. Whew. All right, I'm gonna only take a couple of more. I can't. Well, whose names are new? Henry, I got your stocks. Steve. Brian, I got your stocks. M R Consulting, I got your stocks. Steve, I'm gonna take yours. P E R I, comma. Who else is new? Jim, I've never seen you talk. CRM, I got you. Brian, new, A-U-D-C, comma, Bob, new, S-T-M. All right. I really wanted to make sure I got some of, the, some of the new people in here as far as stocks. I got a lot of stocks. Let's go through them real quick. I like looking at a three-month graph when I look at a graph. This is the important stuff. Looking at support and resistance. Why? I want to see if my stock is breaking through resistance, breaking through support. All of those kinds of things will give me an insight as to what the stock should do going forward. Right now, um, the stock on NICE, I hit a new three-month high. Remember, I'm looking at a three-month graph. This stock hit a new three-month high yesterday without follow through the day. But that is something known as a dragonfly doji, which is a possible... Um, bullish reversal. Right now, though, I'm looking at the three and eight exponential moving averages. They are holding. Anybody, whoever gave me this, if you're holding it, I would, because the three and eight are so far from each other, I would use the three exponential moving average on an end of day basis to base my stop. If the stock's price closes below the three exponential moving average, I would think about taking at least half off the table or taking the, the stock off the table. Another thing that catches my attention, the stock's volume is going down. Volume is conviction. When a stock's price is going up, you want to see rising volume. Earnings is higher than it was three months ago, but starting to fall. A lot of good things going on with the stock, but this is a good time to be cautious with the stock. Next stock, Hubs, looks good. Stocks 3 and 8 look good. Hitting right off a, a three-month high from yesterday. Follow through the day. Love the earnings per share. Starting to fall as well. But the stock is still in the uptrend, $186. Leave it alone if you're in it. If you're not in it, be careful about getting into new stocks right now with the market. Remember, hashtag I on MTI. That's important. Nobody else has the MTI. Nobody else has the MTI, and it's going to prove to be a very useful tool. And nobody who's using the MTI in the software will ever be blindsided, especially because we know what goes up must come down. All right? I on MTI. All right, let's go. So I like hubs. Let's go to the next one. Woo, TTD, what's it doing? Straight up, moving sideways. Uh, volume is falling. That makes sense as the stock is moving sideways. Notice that the three and eight are right with each other. I would think, and I'm going to give you a line in the sand. All right, a good level of support right here. Um, change the style. Make this a little darker so you can see it. That wick created a good level of support right here. If the stock's price goes below that 270, 211, that's probably a good time to get out of the stock. All right, whoever gave that to me. Let's go to the next one. NVIDIA, looking good. Just like Chico and the man, looking good. All right, stock's price is moving up. Stock hit a new high over the last three months yesterday and right at it today. Tom, type it in the room because where did the stock's price stop intraday today? Right at resistance. Earnings per share falling a little bit, but still higher than it was three months ago. Watch the volume, but that makes sense that the volume is falling as the stock is starting to 
move sideways. Next stock, EMPH, looks good. Hit a new three-month high today. Even on the pullback, the 3 me 8 did a really good job keeping you in the stock, which is why we like to use the 3 me 8 exponential moving averages. Look at that pullback. Look at the 3 me 8 saying, uh-uh-uh, not so fast, my friend. And look at the stock's price continue to run. I would still look right now, the 3 me 8 is still close enough to each other that I would wait for the crossover on the 3 me 8 but EMPH looks good. Next stock. Ever, forever, ever, forever, ever. You know what I like about this stock? The stock just broke through a level of resistance. See that? Let's make that a little darker. All right, the stock just broke through a level of resistance. You know what I'm looking for tomorrow? What am I looking for tomorrow? Somebody, somebody already knows. What am I looking for tomorrow? Type it in the room. What am I looking for tomorrow? I like that the 3 and the 8 crossed about four days ago. The stock broke through this level of resistance. What am I looking for tomorrow? Somebody type it in the room. Confirmation. Thank you, Lisa. Absolutely. Would love to see if the stock continues to rise up tomorrow. All right. Excellent. Confirmation. Follow through. Excellent answers. All right. If you're in it, leave it alone. And if you're in it, you probably got in on the 3 8 cross. Let the stock be. You know, let it be. Let it be. Let it be, oh, let it be. Looking at the Vector Vest software, let it be. All right, let's go to the next stock. Um, Nugget, man, I'm not ready for gold yet. Gold is moving sideways, it's going back and forth. A little bit of jagosity, that is a glenism. A little bit of jagosity in the, I'm not ready to touch it yet. A lot of people are like, yeah, gold is gonna move. Well, let it move. Let me get confirmation of the move. I don't want to try to second guess what the market or an individual stock is going to do. Let the stock come to you. Let the trade come to you. That's part of the vision for 2020. Stop chasing the trade. Let the trade come to you. And right now, Nugget is not coming to me just quite yet. I know that it's got a buy recommendation. The volume is pretty steady. I'm not ready to touch it. I'd rather buy it as it's starting to run up. I like the 3A cross over here, follow through. That would have been a good day to get into it and then ride it up until the 3A cross. That's what you look for. All right, next stock, Heiko. Whoo, and Heiko was good going into, uh, let's put this on a one year graph. Heiko was rocking at one time and it did. In 2019, it fell uh, at the uh, in September and it hasn't really got back to its nice upward moving self. Um, the stock is in a channel between the level of 117, 19, and a high of, or well, a level of resistance at 130, 62. That's a nice channel. Um, the only people that are making money in this are the people that are trading the channel. All right, because if I got into it now, the 3 and the 8 look good, I would be holding it up into that level of resistance of 130, 62. I got some room to make some money. The 3 and the 8 still have you in the stock. So that's what I think about Heiko. Love the earnings per share is higher. Next one, LYV, Live Nation. First thing, earnings is lower than it was three months ago. I like the move to the upside. I like that it broke through resistance, but what is it now doing? After it broke through resistance, it's now testing that level of resistance as a level of support. Look at the pullback. The 3 and 8 is still in play, but the stock's price is coming to test this level of 73.87 as a level of support. What is a good longer term moving average to watch? Let's talk about that. How about the 10 and 30? I'm going to still use them as exponential. I'm going to bump it up just for the use of Borium. I'm going to bump these up to 10 and 30. Oops, up, 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 up. 10 and 30 exponential might be a good longer term way to go. All right, and if that's the case, notice that the 10 and 30s are still in place. I'm still using exponential moving averages, but understand, <clears throat> once you make the moving average longer, it keeps you in the stock longer. If the stock falls, you won't get out as early as the three and the eights. Does that make sense? Now, Jake says the 50 and the 150. That's for your longer term stocks. Your retirement stocks, I would use the 50 and 150. And I would use that because it would get me out earlier than the big money makers. All right, the 50 and 150 there. All right, but I wouldn't put the 50 and 150 even on my longer term trades. I like the 10 and the 30 exponential uh, moving averages for longer term. All right, I'm going to leave the rest of them here. Wow. Waste management. Well, people keep getting waste and they got to get managed, right? I love this stock. 
good looking equity curve. You know something? The 10 is so far away from the 30 that I would trade this to get out strictly on the 10. Does everybody in the room understand that? Type a yes or a no in the room. I wouldn't wait for the 10 to cross below the 30 because the stock is clearly above the 10. I would use the 10 as a way to stop out of the stock. Does everybody in the room understand that? Type it in the room, yes or no. Because these are the things that make a difference in waiting for that moving average crossover when they're close together or saying, well, Glenn said to wait for the 10 and the 30 to cross, but this stock is clearly above the 10 by a lot I would then take that 10-day exponential moving averages away. And this is more, this is more vision, folks. That's all this is. Um, Power Fleet, watch it. 10 is above the 30 right now. I wouldn't wait because, it's, because they are so far from each other. I would trade it off the 10 again. And right now, on an end-of-day basis, I would wait for the, 10, uh, the stock price to go below the 10. It was looking nice. Look at the volume, though. It was looking nice, but it's pulling back. Uh, watch that stock. Square hit a new high last week, pulled back off of that high, a little bit of a dark cloud cover, followed through, a little bit of a gravestone doji, no follow through. The 3 and the 8 look good if you're in it, leave it alone. Uh, actually, the 10 and the 30 look good if you're in it, leave it alone. Um, let the stock's price come below, whether it's the 3 exponential or the 10, let it break below that, leave it be. All right, I wouldn't pull the trigger on it as a new trade just quite yet. WCG looks good. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. It looks good. Again, on another scenario where I would use just a 10. Look at the price nicely above that. Earnings looks good. Big, nice volume is steady. I like that stock. And again, I still want to caution you. It looks good. It stopped right at resistance. Type it in the room, Tom. It stopped right at resistance. This is why we wait for breakthroughs. This is exactly why. Nice up, update today, but stopped right at resistance. Stop. Say again? Good looking graph. It is a beautiful looking graph. I love that graph. Looks good. All right. Next one. Uh, TMHC. Nicely, this is a good regression trade. Pulled back right to a level of support. Bounced off that support. Three in the eight cross. Look at the run. Stock moved from a sell to a hold to a buy. Like the graph. Uh, earnings is higher than it was three months ago. Lisa says the last 10 minutes of the session are so valuable. Even if I don't have the stock, your explanations have helped me manage my stocks. Thank you, Glenn, Joey, and everyone at VectorVest uh, for this awesome tool. Oh, thank you. This is an EMA. This EMA, Bob, is now a 10 and a 30, not a 3 and an 8. I changed it from a, to a longer-term perspective. Does that make sense, Bob? All right, because people wanted to look at it from a longer term perspective, so I put on different moving averages. But I can quickly change that back to a three and the eight whenever I want to. All right, let's go to the next stock. LHX looks good. Uh, earnings per share looks higher than it was uh, three months ago. Love that. Volume is open, but look at the three and the uh, 10 and the 30. I love, this is again, because the moving averages are so far from each other, I would definitely just use the 10. Nice, good up day today. Again, be careful if you're picking out a new stock for today. Perry, be careful with that. Love that it was moving up. Who gave me Perry? A new person gave me Perry. Type in the room, who gave me Perry? And if you gave me Perry, are you trading it right now? Yes or no? So number one, who gave it to me? And number two, are you trading it? All right, while that's going on, hopefully you'll answer. Be careful with this. Uh, the stock is pulling back. It had a down day yesterday, confirmation of more of a down day today. I'm looking at the 10 and 30 exponential. If I'm looking at when to get out of it, Steve gave it to me. And Steve, are you in the stock? Uh, if you are, I would use, from a longer term perspective, this 10 EMA to get out. If it closes on an end of day basis below that, that may be a good opportunity to lock in your profits, especially knowing that the market is at a level of looking for a top. All right, CRM, nicely moving higher. Down day yesterday, a little bit of an indecision, doji, doji cross today. Um, sit on your hands, let it be. Uh, it's nicely above the 10 exponential. I'll leave it alone. Steve says, yes, having some long since a few days ago, got it from the Midas touch list. All right, so going back to that, just be careful. Beautiful looking equity curve. Now know that uh, it's coming to that 10 exponential. Don't give, it, don't, don't give up too much of your profit, all right? 
Don't give up too much of your profit. So to CRM, a little bit of the just sit, sit by and wait day. Uh, audio codes, I love that this stock is nice 45 degree angle. Down day to day, the 10 and the 30 are looking good. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Down day doesn't mean, look at this, two, two days down, never broke below the 10. Leave it alone. All right. And last one, STM. Be careful with stocks that gap up as much as it does. Um, watch the earnings per share. I don't like the earnings per share. Gap up today. Nice big volume. Just be careful because as quickly as a stock can gap up, like you see here, it can gap down and gap down again. Just be careful with gapping stocks. Ahmed, I will put one more stock on. One more stock. You want to look at Tesla, T-S-L-A. Tesla running. All right, Tesla is running. Love that the 10 and the 30 look good. Volume is steady. Earnings looks good. Uh, the stock price had a little bit of a uh, doji action yesterday. A lot of selling pressure with a big wick at the top of the candle. A little bit of a reprieve today. Not much. It is an open candle, but not a big open candle. If I'm looking to get in, I'd wait for it to take off that high first. I do love that the three. three in, the, uh, in this case, this was the 10 and the 30. Look at these moving average crossovers. That was a good opportunity to get in on 12.10 and look at the stock go. Even on the pullback, the moving average is still kept you in it. So there you go. Why not buy audio codes today? Um, why would you want to buy audio codes? Oh, did I close out of it? I hope not. Where's it at? STM, Tesla. Um, uh, STM, is this it? Why not buy audio codes today? What's it doing today? Look at that. What's it doing today? We did look at LYV. LYV was in the list. I took a look at LYV. I swear I did. Actually, I could do it this way. L, did I get LYV? There it is. We did, we looked at LYV. LYV was already in the list. I already talked about it. There it is. It's pulling back from that high, uh, right at that level of the 10 exponential. Earnings is lower than it was three months ago. Uh, it is pulling back. Something to take in mind, keep in mind on possibly taking profits off of that, but it is pulling back, definitely. Waste management looked really good, Henry. We did look at that stock, too. All right, with all of that being said, man, we had a full day today. Again, if you're new or if, you're, if you've been with us for a while, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Comment, 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 comment. After these videos are put out in the world as recordings, <coughs> excuse me, don't forget to comment. Tell me if you liked the video. Tell me if you didn't like the video. Tell me what you would like to see. That's what I'm talking about. Do that. Comment. That's the way we're going to grow this platform. So I'm asking from me and from Joey. Are you asking them too, Joey? I want you to comment on the videos. Please do so. With that, folks, thanks for being here. Thank you. We appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. See you next week. Adios, arrivederci, ciao. Au revoir, sayonara. I'm going to see some of you tomorrow, and I ain't going to see a lot of you tomorrow. Later.